Hello learners, I am Dr. Rajendra Kumar Naik from NIOS. At first, I would like to welcome to our program Senior Secondary Mathematics. And today, we are going to discuss an important and basic fundamental topic in your textbook that is uh, of sets. And uh, today, with us, Dr. Rajpal Singh, PGT Mathematics, RVVP, New Delhi. And uh, sir, I would like to welcome to our studio. Thank you, sir. And on behalf of learners, at first I would like to pose a question that is, what is the basic concept of set? Every day we come across this word set with some other words. For example, we have some of the collections where this word is used. As we can see on our screen, we have a word sofa set, another word is tea set then a jewelry set and a dinner set. See in all four these one, they are collections, but uh, everywhere we find this word set. It means first of all it must be clear that set uh, is a collection of objects. But uh, do we say that uh, every type of collection will be a set? Let us see one more picture. In collection of sofa set, we have uh, got one more chair that is a plastic chair. Now in this collection, can we say again that it is also a sofa set? Obviously no, because this plastic chair is disturbing this collection and when this plastic chair is included in collection of uh, chairs of sofa, we do not say it is a sofa set. One more example. We have a collection of utensils which we say a dinner set and uh, one more utensil a cup plate is included in this collection and uh, now as a whole can we say that this collection is uh, again a dinner set? Obviously again the answer is no because cup plate cannot be included in the collection of utensils of dinner set. It means in both of these two examples, these two collections were disturbed. We were not calling them a set when a plastic chair was included in sofa chairs and a cup plate was included in utensils of a dinner set. Let us go through some more examples. Here we have two types of different collections. One collection is collection of interesting books in library. Another collection is collection of mathematics books in library. If we see the first one, now question arises how we will decide that which book is interesting because it will depend on the interest of one individual that in which book he finds interest. So it is quite difficult or say controversial to find out a collection of interesting book for which everybody will agree. And in the second one, this is very much clear that particular book will be included in this collection, the book which belongs to the subject mathematics. So here it is very much clear that what book will be included in that collection and what book will not be included in this particular collection. Let us take one more example. Here is one of the collection is collection of good cricket players of India and another collection parallelly that is collection of players those who have played test cricket for India. See in the first one we will find that again it is very much controversial to select that which player is good and which player is not good. Opinion will vary from person to person but in the case of second collection we can decide it very clearly that which player will be included in the collection because we know that who are the players those who have played test cricket for India. So after going through with these examples we can define a set mathematically and we say that set is a collection of well defined objects. First one it must be a collection and secondly this collection must be well defined. Sir, here one question I would like to put that is what is the exactly meaning of uh, well-defined object? 
okay yes this is very much important or say say the soul of this definition well defined what do we mean by this word well defined i would like to tell you the word well defined very first time was used by german mathematician george cantor and by well defined he clearly indicated that if every element or say every member of the collection is having a defined property a particular defined property on the basis of which we can decide whether this particular member can be included in this collection or can not be included in this collection then we say it is well defined means if it is included we say this member is defined to be included in this collection and if it cannot be included in this collection then we say that this particular member is not defined to be in this collection maintained to be a set sir second question is how we represent the sets now we have understood that what collection is a set and what collection is not a set now the second question naturally what you have arise that is how to represent or say how to write or how to describe a set let us take it through one example suppose we have a collection of uh, vowels of english alphabet so set of vowels of english alphabet it will be written as set is represented by the capital letter s and uh, we simply list down all the members of that collection which we want to describe they are a e i o u they are separated by comma and then they are enclosed by a curly bracket this is the way we write a set or say we describe a set and this particular way of writing or describing or say representing a set is called roster form simply listing down the element separated by commas and enclosed by a curly bracket see in the second one you are finding that all these alphabets uh, are written haphazardly means their order is changed now so while writing a set it doesn't matter that on what place or what order a particular member is written or representing so as whether it is written as a e i o u or s equal to e a i u o they both are the correct description of the set order of representation does not matter when we represent a set secondly this set was a smaller one there were only five elements or say members a e i o u but what happens when the set becomes a larger one we will see it in this example this is set of letters used in word mathematics and set is written as m a t h e i c s if we see the word m was twice in the word mathematics but in the set we find it is written only once again the same type of things is there it, alphabet a is written only once and t is also written once while these alphabets were appearing twice in the word mathematics it means this is the second rule of writing a set that when we are describing or writing a set we do not repeat the members of the collection means if any member is appearing two times in a collection while representing the set we write it only once now what will happen if the set is a larger one here both the sets were having very small numbers of collection very small number of members a e i o u or say m a t h e i c s very small sets let us now discuss one more set here the set is set of all indian citizens we know very clearly that which person is citizen of india and who is not a citizen of india here we have represented this set with a blank two curly brackets and if we want to write down this set we have to write down names of all the persons those who are citizen of india and uh, we can imagine that it will be too difficult 
not a feasible idea to write down a set in this particular form or say if I want to write down a set of natural numbers from 1 to 1000 in that case also I will have to write all natural numbers from 1 to 1000 I have to separate by comma and then I have to enclose them in a curly bracket it will be not a practical thing means it will be too difficult and the representation will not be so convenient to use. So this type of larger sets we have got one more way of representing a set and that is called set builder form. Now let us see how do we represent this particular set in set builder form. Here when set was set of all Indian citizen we represent it in this way a equal to x then two dots we can see there these two dots means such that this is a symbol which is used x such that and now we define the x what is x in our example x it was an Indian citizen so we describe it in this way x such that x is an Indian citizen again I repeat when we describe the set in this particular way we represent all the elements of that set with x and then we define x means what is x as in this particular example it is an Indian citizen. This symbol of two dots this is called such that so we pronounce it x such that x is an Indian citizen. So for representing larger sets this is the way which is feasible and convenient to use. So large sets they are written in the set builder form and the sets which are a smaller one easy to write we write down in roster form. So sir here uh, set can be represent two forms one is a roster form another is a set builder form. So thing is can we convert roster form to set builder form or vice versa can we do it? Yeah we can do it it depends on our requirement means if in some case set is given to us in set builder form and we need the set in roster form or set is given in roster form and we need the set in the representation of set builder form we can convert that. Uh, let us understand through an example here a set A is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 up to 100 means this is a set of even natural numbers from 2 to 100. Now I want to describe this particular set which is written in roster form I want to describe it in form of set builder form and I will write it in this way a equal to x now I have to define x what is x x is I know that is an even number and we know how do we represent an even number even number is written as 2n where n is a natural number so n belongs to n the symbol which we are looking at between n and capital N that we pronounce belongs to and now I have to restrict the length of set that is 2 to 100 so I put the value of n means n is less than or equal to 50 so all elements from 2 to 100 they are defined by the way that x is 2n means an even number and that is less where n is less than 50 so automatically by the way of 2n it will become less than or equal to 100 or in another way if I have to describe a set which is given to us in set builder form and I have to write it down in roster form see set D is equal to it is defined as x such that x belongs to R and x square minus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. If I solve this quadratic equation x square minus 7x plus 12 I get the values of x as 3 and 4. So the elements I find in set D they are 3 and 4 and I know if all members of the collection are 3 and 4 how to write it in the form of roster. So in roster form I list down 3 and 4 I separate them by comma and close in curly bracket and set is represented in roster form which is d equal to 3 comma 4. Now okay, what are the different types of sets? 
yes sets are classified in different different forms and uh, when we talk of uh, type of sets a one glimpse we have seen just now that sets could be a very larger one set could be a very smaller one so on the basis of size sets are of two type one is finite and another one is infinite for example finite set is a equal to a e i o u means here in this particular example of set a it is quite possible to count all the elements elements are 5 so in any set if we are able to count the elements the total number of elements we are able to find out we say the set is finite or another one if we are not able to count down the elements then it is infinite set means total number of elements if it is not possible to count as it is appearing in another set which is b equal to x such that x is a natural number and we know natural numbers are infinite in counting next type of sets we find that set is defined as empty set and as it is obvious with its meaning empty means it doesn't contain anything so the set is x such that x is a number which is less than 0 you know we don't have any natural number which is less than 0 so a is empty it doesn't contain any element the same type of set is defined below that x such that x belongs to r means x is a real number and x square equal to minus 1 we know that we don't have any such real number whose square is negative so b also doesn't contain any element the symbol by which this set is represented that is phi this is a greek alphabet the next type of sets we have that is a singleton set and uh, this is defined through an example x such that x is a woman president of india we know till the date india has got only one woman president see till the date india has got only one woman president so the set is defined as a set which has only one element that set is known as singleton set now we have three sets here set a is a e i o u set b is written as 1 2 3 4 5 5 and set c is written as 2 1 5 4 3 see the relation between set a and b that they both have five elements elements in set a is also five elements in set b are also five such sets are called equivalent another one set b and c are written the only difference is the number of element the order of elements is changed they have the same exact number number of elements and have the same elements also in that case the two sets are called equal sets so now question is sir what is the basic difference between equal set and equivalent set yeah the different between equal and equivalent is that in case of equivalent sets only the number of elements are same but in case of equal sets not only the number of elements are same but elements are all exactly the same so we can conclude that all equal set are equivalent but reverse is not true yeah all equal sets can be called equivalent but all equivalent sets are not equal sets yes we have seen that if two sets have same number of element and equal then we can say these are equal and equivalent set if are not equal then what kind of set we can say okay see sets may have same elements may have same number of elements and may have different elements or different number of elements see if different number of elements or say different elements are there now let us understand what we call them see let us see in this example two sets are there set a is 1, 2,3 and another one set b is 4,5,6 these two sets are entirely different they don't have any element or say any member common such sets they are called disjoint sets means two sets are said to be disjoint sets if they do not have 
any common element. Such sets are called disjoint sets. Today we have discussed three things mainly on set theory that is set how we have to define set and different types of sets and how we have to represent sets that is in a roster form and set builder forms. So thank you sir, today you have joined you to our much, studio. Sir. प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को धन साधन समय की सीमा से कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम पढ़े और जागे ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने
घर बैठे पाए राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी एन में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत एन से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं एन में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश देने में सहूलियत मिलती है एन में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले एन की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें पंजीकरण के बाद लॉगिन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र खुलेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट ले इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रीकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से, जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में देय हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के संबद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों पर दस दिनों में पहुँच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज ना लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन